I'm recording this a little early because it's Holland Camping Week. Cue all the reading and ice cream and the beach. I've been looking forward to those for a long time. And I'm not really fully there because I still have to work two days of the week, but it's almost there. It's so close, I can taste it. I don't know if you remember my vlog from last year's Helen Camping, but it's probably gonna be pretty much the same. Lots of reading. I'm so excited. I'm uh, about halfway, not quite halfway through Aragon, but almost there, and I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, reading it again, it's just all coming back how much I enjoyed it, and I feel like even more than I really remembered or picked up before. Like, did you notice how impulsive Aragon is? It's kind of crazy. He finds this liquid that can burn your skin off, and he discovers this by, like, pouring some of it onto his finger. <laughs> also, he's just not very tactful when talking to people yet, which I guess is because so far he hasn't really lived around a lot of people. And it's interesting to see, knowing in the future how much he's going to change and grow and who he's going to meet and just seeing him where he is now in like farm boy uh, novice mode <laughs> or whatever. It's just very interesting and I'm really enjoying it. I'm excited to read the whole series through because it felt very disjointed the first time since you had to wait like a whole year in between books. Remember how long it felt like it took to wait for Inheritance to come out? Ugh, that was crazy. But I had a lot of fun talking about it with you. And just another thing I wanted to talk to you about this week is actually a sermon that I heard on Sunday. It was just so relevant and needed and helpful, and so I just have to talk to you about it. And if you're someone else watching and you're just not into that kind of thing, well, that's fine. You can click away and go watch Cats or something, but I really think that this is so relevant and vital to our thriving in this day and age. I think it's so helpful. So here we go. Right now we're going through a series on Colossians and Pastor Heather talked about Colossians 2 verses 16 through 23 and she talked a lot about freedom in Christ, which if you think about it sounds pretty relevant to, you know, the 4th of July and stuff. Freedom! <laughs> She even got a little brave heart in there. But mostly what she was talking about was the freedom that we have to not be defined by everyone else's rules for uh, what we can do and what makes us valuable. So she talked about how a lot of times outside voices and influences have way too much power over us. And we let people tell us, well, you can't do that because you're a girl or you're a boy or you're not smart enough to do that or you don't belong in this group. And it can be very discouraging and it causes us a lot of pain. And yet a lot of the times we let people impose those limits on our lives. And why do we do that? It's just part of who we are, I guess. We want acceptance and we don't want to stick out too much and we just want to belong somewhere. So we go along with it. And in the passage, Paul is writing to the Colossians about a lot of rules that they think that they have to follow and he's telling them they don't. And you know how in the Bible there's a lot of rules that we don't really understand that are kind of weird and just don't really make a lot of sense. And so I think I've personally always just kind of skipped over that part because like it doesn't make sense to me. Like I've never uh, had to worry about what kind of meat I can eat or things like that. So I just wasn't sure that it was relevant to me, but this message made it very, very relevant. What Pastor Heather said is that Paul fully understands the human need for acceptance and love and belonging, but he's challenging the Colossian church and telling them, you don't have to fit in anyone's box. You don't have to follow all these rules if you want to belong to Christ. You don't have to do any of it. Can I just read you a bunch of quotes that I wrote down because they're awesome? I'm gonna. In verse 20, Paul says, you died with Christ and your identity is now in Christ, which means that you are who he says you are. Other people do not determine your value or worth. You are not bound by other judgments, opinions, expectations. And later on, she got to some even better news. And she said, if you are a follower of Christ, even you don't decide your value. Christ does. 
So it doesn't matter if you think you're beautiful or valuable or not. Christ does. And he tells us that we're valuable just because he calls us his. You are more than your biggest failure. And you're more than your greatest success. You are more than people think you are. More than what you hope you are. And more than what you long to be. Whew. That felt like she was talking right to me, to be honest. And I know it's a general thing and a lot of people probably identified with that, but I just so identify with hoping to be so much and wishing to be so much and wishing to be like other people because I see value in them. And it just made me think a lot about where do I find my value and do I think that I'm as valuable as God thinks I am or for the reasons that God thinks I am. God wants you free. Stand firm and don't be bound anymore by a yoke of slavery. Overall, I think this message is something that a lot of us have heard before, especially in Christian circles, you know. And it feels like something we should already know, in a way, but it's just so hard to internalize, I think. It's so hard to live every day and deal with all these doubts and insecurities and not be buried by them and not let them rule your life. It's much harder to remind yourself every day that God thinks you're valuable when there's so many messages around and advertising and shows and magazines and everything that wants to tell you that you're not enough because that's how they gain the most really is you buy magazines or you buy things if you think that they will help you to become enough. But you don't need any of that stuff if you already believe that you are not just enough, but valuable and a true image bearer of God who has inherent value and beauty. And that's what you are, Jess. That's what I am. That's what every person is. And I want to make it clear that I really don't want to take any credit from Pastor Heather for repeating all of this. I just think it was a really, really wonderful message. And I just really want to talk about how good my God is because all of that just seems too good to be true, but it's not. And I just think that that truth, that freeing truth, and I just think that that truth, that truth that sets us free is too good to keep to myself. It's too good not to share. And I am going to post the YouTube link to her sermon so that you can watch it for yourself. And I just really hope that it helps you as much as it helped me. I think that's all I've got for you today. By the time you watch this, I will be fully enjoying my camping trip. I can't wait. And I really hope you have a good week too. I love you so, so much, Jess, and I will see you on Monday.